I thought I'd give you a bit of a look today at uh, this model that I got <laughs> at the beginning of the month. I bought this from a chap on um, on Facebook, I think it was. Now, this model was for sale. It is an old seven scale pug kit, uh, now made by Springside and rather expensive these days. I bought this for a very good price as it was technically a non-runner. Um, and I'll go over the reasons why, but as you've seen by the footage uh, in the opening to this, and you'll see in the running session video that I'll be doing when the uh, whenever the, I don't know if I'll be filming that later today or not, but we'll see. Um, this it now works pretty damn well. So the model is a white metal kit. Well, the body is entirely white metal with the chassis being brass. Um, forgive the mat on the wheels. I've just been painting the wheel rims. Um, so that's sort of just an undercoat. I need to go over them with a more satin finish to match the rest of the model. Um, there's a few cosmetic things to solve on it. Now I've got it working. I won't be doing those till after the Christmas period, of course. But for now, it's nice to have it working and, you know, been able to use the model, which is fantastic. Um, the cosmetic things, if I just look on the underside, as you can see, this bit of valve gear that's on this side is missing from the other uh, the brake pull rods are a bit battered, I've managed to fix what I could. Um, but when I got the model, um, the motor did work electrically, it worked perfectly. Um, there was, you know, the decent slaters, I think the slaters are plunger pickups, which I was always a bit sceptical of plunger pickups before, till I've seen what they're like when they're installed properly in uh, this model. So I think I might have to try those in a, f in a future kit build. Um, and maybe go back to the drawery and fit them if they work well on if the, any future kit builds that I do. Obviously, like I said, this one is not one I've built. It's been built very, very well. Finished as 51202. And I think this one went down to Radstock or somewhere on the S&D for a while. Um, the bloke I bought it from, obviously from that part of the country. And whoever built it originally, uh, I assume was from the same area, hence the number. It's um it's a lovely little model. Like I said, there's a few things missing. It's missing a lamp iron here, um, but that that can easily be replaced. On the back, it is missing the see there's the rivets on the brass cover there, but it's not got one on here. I have just painted over it in black, so it's not bare wood. Um, just you know, just I've, all I've done for now is just make a few cosmetic things for it, just to try and make the model look a bit better. Then obviously after Christmas, I can get a few. Uh, bits and pieces ordered in to fix it up properly. You'll notice the biggest issue uh, being that the covers that should cover the piston here, uh, they are not on the model. Now, I've looked at real the real thing at 51202 five, and it did have them, so I think these have just come off at some point or uh, they've not been fitted through personal choice or whatever the story is behind it, they're not there, but... Um, I'll see if about scratch building them or having them 3D printed or something like that. So we'll have to see how that turns out. But everything that needs to be on the model that can't be replaced is there. As you see, the whistle that would have originally been sat on top is gone. Now, the thing is with, with the L and Y pugs, in BR days, the whistles were on the front of the cab. But in L and Y, and I think... Um, at least definitely early LMS, they were still on the top. Now, the model, as you can see, is obviously BR livery. Very, very nice BR livery at that as well. Um, I, however, think that I'm considering possibly redoing the model into Lancashire and Yorkshire um, black. Now, the livery for the L&Y, um, if you have seen... The preserved 51218, or I think it's LMI number 68. That has been shown in preservation in LMI lined goods black, which is just with the red all the red lining on it. However, its counterpart, number 19, has just been in plain black. And I've looked at some pictures online and actually managed to find a picture. Oh, there goes my pointy thing. Um, I've been able to find a picture of number 68. In Ellen Y days, now it was quite a find to be honest with you, but it shows the model, sorry not the model, the locomotive clearly in plain black. So I think that must be the more correct livery because 
with your LNY liveries, the red lining, just black with red lining, indicated, um, I do believe, a, it was either mixed traffic or goods, and then red and white lining was passenger, or mixed traffic. I can't remember which was which, but I think plain black was just reserved primarily for shunting engines, but I'm not too sure. I'd have to do some looking up on that. As I made the discovery this morning, I originally thought that the smokebox number plate here was a casting on the door, but it turns out that must be, uh, it seems to be a separate piece. I've noticed a few seam lines, so that might be able to prise off. So I'm con contemplating putting it in LNY livery. Um, I am quite an LNY enthusiast, I do like the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. But I think British Rail will suit the layout much, much better, and uh, it saves me a job. All I'd have to do is just renumber it. I can leave the crests on, which are very nicely applied, actually. They've, uh, as you can see, they sit over the rivets quite nicely. Considering I think that's a water slide transfer from Fox, because I have got some others from Fox transfers that are identical, so I do believe that's where that's from. But all in all, it's a smashing little engine. One thing I do rather like about these models um, is the windows are designed to be opened. This one's a bit, I'll show you the other one, that one's a bit stiff. There you are, look. You can position the windows open. All four do work, this one's just a bit stiff. I think there must be some paint gumming it up. But if I push it back, it's slotted. And rather nicely, we've built it, left the roof and removable. So there's a very terrifying looking driver in there. I don't know if it's just me, but I think that guy's a little bit creepy. Um, <laughs> I've seen a few people paint eyes on O-Gage figures, but this guy just looks a bit terrifying. But very nice, very nice moulding though. Um, the cab, very well detailed, very, very nice. Um, I have just this morning uh, repaired the regulator and put some paint over it on the weathering. Um, the handle bit, just if I just come in here, this bit here was missing, so I've used some plastic rod and I've filed the end round and I've just super glued that on and regulator fixed. Um, it was quite mucky when I got it. Uh, there's a few things in the cab, like the shovel there, the coal I don't like very much, there's the a sweeping brush there and things. You know, there's a few changes I think I'll make to the model itself, my own, you know, personal touches as we all want. It's got a gauge on there and everything, reverse. It's a, it's a lovely little model. It's a really, really nice little model. And if you know anything about O-Gauge Pugs, you will know they are quite rare. They don't come up for sale very often, and when they do, they're frighteningly expensive. So to be able to pick up a little bargain like this, I'm rather chuffed with that. Uh, like I say, it was sold as a non-runner, and in just an afternoon's work, a bit of cleaning, um, the wheels were all... The wheels were all loose on the axles, so I had to take the wheels out and I had to um, super glue them back on the axles and quarter them, but they're all nicely firm on there now, and as you've seen in the footage, she does run very, very nicely. So I think I've got myself quite a nice little bargain there. So um, thank you for watching the video, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you've enjoyed a look into the new little member of the fleet. Um, as I say, I prefer to buy... Uh, sorry, not preferred. I prefer to build um, everything from a kit, but I do have a few ready-to-run models, or you know, compared to kit builds. But this one, this one is very, very nice. Now, whoever built it, whether because uh, obviously being quite an old kit, I don't know where in the world this person is, but whoever built it did an absolutely lovely job of building this originally. I just think at some point somebody has possibly dropped this because um, this uh, what do you call them now? Motion bracket, that's it. This motion bracket was snapped, um, and obviously all the brake rigging underneath is damaged. Uh, and there's a few other bits missing, and there's a few paint scuffs here and there. So I think, sadly, at this some point, this model might have been dropped, definitely been mishandled. Um, it's become damaged, and it's not been known quite how to repair it. So it's definitely stood for some time um, in the state it was in. But thankfully, it's now in my collection, my hands, I've been able to repair it. And I've got an absolutely lovely engine uh, for the bit of the very bit of work that I've put in. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think I'll cover this in a future video, sort of uh, go over what changes I'm making to it and the repairs and things like that. So we'll see this bug become something absolutely fantastic. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.